What happened is Greg Opie Hughes was finally fired by Sirius for sucking and for taking pictures of a coworker shitting, but that's a whole other thing. Ugh. No need to get into that. It took him about 10 months to finally land another gig, and everyone was wondering, what's he going to do? Sirius has fired him. Where is he going to go? Is he going to trust your radio? Is he do something new? He's doing a podcast with the same assholes he was doing a terrible radio show with at Sirius, and it's exactly the same thing. It's the same cast of characters, these unfunny people that Opie surrounds himself with, and it's the same nonsense that was going on that no one was listening to on Sirius. He's such a one trick pony. Like I I could I could not tell if you put this on and I didn't know better, I would say this was from nineteen ninety five. Right. He has not changed his format, he's not changed his attitude, he's not funny. Ugh. He's a shock jock, and the way that he gained notoriety was through all the shock jock ways that you do that. Right. Getting girls up into the studio, shoving things, you know, wiffle ball bats and girls Ugh. and all the things they used to do in the 90s that you can't do anymore. Right. Because finally people are like, well, you know, there's like a Me Too movement and this is probably inappropriate. So now he's this guy who's trying to live in a world that has deserted him. Right. He can't do what he's famous for doing. And he's trying to be funny and roll with the punches. He's brought on unfunny comedians onto his show, and he's unfunny. Here's uh, another line as me as a cop that sounds a lot like me as the, the sergeant that sounds a lot like me as the, the Irish gang member. <laughs> I'm a black ninja, mother... <laughs> oh, oh, oh it's hey. beeped for XM. What? Oh. Wow, see? Dude, see, that proves that they're censoring the Opie and Anthony show. I pay for uncensored radio. At 10 11, they proved my point. <laughs> I have to say, Opie pulled the I'm a black ninja motherfucker line for the next game as well, so. Oh. Yeah, and I don't even have to change my lines from game to game. <laughs> right. Now, now the fucking. Same line and voice. Now the fucking Irish gang member says, I'm a black ninja. That's. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. You're Laswell. fucking Gary Coleman. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> yeah. No, he sounds a little bit. It, 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 uh, I'm a black ninja, but he sounded like a leprechaun. And then you rub. Uh, I'm a black ninja. Then you rub it Don't in. You know. And I'll keep it vague, obviously. Uh, then you rub it in and show me all this unbelievable stuff Anthony did. And like, oh, thanks, dude. Well, I get it. I suck. Thank uh, you, sir. Yeah, Anthony, I'll go home now. Anthony came by for, for multiple sessions. <laughs> no yeah. shit, he did. I saw. I like that. I might have to make that my, my career after this completely blows up. <laughs> so Opie does not understand anything about podcasting at all. This is him setting up the fact that they're at this place called Gephards. And uh, this week I find myself in the neighborhood, the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I'm on 72nd Street at one of my favorite beer joints. It's called Gephards. And uh, I got the owner uh, of Gephards in front of me, Matt. Hello. Uh, I love your joint, brother. Thank you. Okay. The crazy thing is, so Opie will just have anybody on the show to just ramble. We'll get in more into that. But Opie still thinks he's doing local radio because he grew up in Rochester doing radio, right. Buffalo, Boston, New York. He's traveled around having a local radio show and he still thinks that's what he's doing, but he's not. He's doing a podcast. Right. So this is so local radio-esque. And uh, explain to the people that uh, don't know Gebhardt's on the Upper West Side. Uh, yeah, it's a bottle shop, bar, and yeah. restaurant. So uh, we do, we've got about 300 different bottled beers, bottles and cans, and then 16 rotating draft beers, mostly craft, high-end import, and then your grandpa's favorite old swill, grandpa cans. That's boring. You're boring, everybody. Quit boring, everyone. Thanks, Crouch. Thanks for that drop. <laughs> Why would anybody care? You're listening to a podcast. He's promoting this guy's bar that is a seven hour drive from where I live. Right. Why would I care about this? And again, he thinks it's radio. And I've talked about this before. Why did I mega touch on? It's only going to make noise. What am I, do what am I doing? What are we in a bar? You're pro. Oh, Jesus. So he's talking about the fact that he's at Gephardt's and he, he explains where it is and, and that they're there and how many beers they have on tap and all this stuff. It's a podcast. You hear that, you've heard it. Uh huh. It doesn't matter if it's an hour long, three hours long. You listen to a podcast from the beginning to the end. Right. That's how podcasting works. An hour into the show, he gets back into plugging it again. Yes. You need another one. Let's do a drinking here, game. Here, here, here. Have some of the oh, right, right, yeah, bourbon. Yeah. We're at uh, Gephardt's on the Upper West Side. This is a great joint. I'm going to do I'll a lot of podcasts from this uh, place. I love this. Seventy second between West End and uh, Broadway. So he has to explain again where the place is and what they're doing. 
Opie, no one's just joining the show now. I know. He I... thinks that he's doing the radio again. Well, he is it's so out of touch. Oh, he's wildly so out of touch. So out of touch. Yes. And he's, I, don't, I would argue he's probably never really been in touch, maybe for a brief moment in time, but I think that was just by accident. Um, so I, I have a lot of clips to get through. Again, this is just... Opie thinking he's doing local radio. Where are we? 72nd Street between West End and Broadway. If you're in yeah. New York City, man, this is definitely a joint to, to check out. Yeah, some things walking by here. Some tasties. All right. We'll get into this discussion about the tasties. Uh, they're, they're doing all the things you shouldn't do when you're doing a podcast. They're explaining where they are, what's going on around them, looking at people and going, oh, look at that person. They're Which right. Crozier pointed out in the show when we were on Weez's show, he did the exact same thing. We're on the radio and this guy, Brother Weez in Rochester, is looking out the window and going, look at that guy's hat. Right. And it's like, dude, we're broadcasting to people who are listening to this show. And I just want to point out Jim Florentine, who is a friend of the show, friend mm-hmm. of Opie's, mm-hmm. big on Opie and Anthony, big friend of Jim Norton. He does a podcast. And he even explains in the intro of his podcast every episode why nobody wants to listen to local radio anymore. I listen to this podcast is because you are not listening to regular terrestrial radio anymore because it fucking stinks. Right. It does stink. It stinks because people like Opie and Wheeze still think that they're so interesting that they can talk about something you'd have no idea what they're talking about and you would give a shit. That's what this show is. Right. It's nonstop talking about things no one cares about. And then the the problem with Opie as a broadcaster, he's so unprofessional, is he's having this discussion about IPAs, which is boring and mundane. But then he just sees someone he knows and just acts like it's okay to break everything that they're doing and focus on that. Right, right. Oh. But, but they didn't make it so bitter for, for people. Hey! What's up, man? What's, What's going on? Everybody knows Oak. <laughs> What's up? Oh, it's my neighbor. What's up, man? <laughs> Our kids play together. Come in there. Okay. Well, you got to get past the high level security. <laughs> you got to get that. Just, that's razor wire right there. You got to jump careful. double dutch Don't, before you go. Yeah, just, uh, scream double dutch before you, go, before you run in. <laughs> when, you, when you come back, come on up and uh, join the podcast. Yeah. Okay. All right. There you have it. Wait, you know Ben too? Ben <laughs> <laughs> knows everybody. You know that me and my uh, you his me too now, Dave? his uh, his daughter and my Double son. Uh, oh, you know. same age, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, who cares? Uh, who would possibly care about this? And this is what the problem is with Opie. He doesn't understand. He was riding the coattails. He's literally like Inspector Gadget. You know, like how Inspector Gadget has no idea what he's doing. Yeah. But he's got like the dog and the and the girl, and they do all the shit for him, and then he takes full credit. That's Opie. Yeah. Opie had Anthony and Jim Norton and Jim Norton's um, network of all these comedians and all these people he was friends with. And they would come on the show and make the show entertaining for years. Oh, so great. And Opie thinks that he did that. Opie thinks that he, shit that comes out of his mouth is interesting. It's not interesting in any single way. He's a terrible broadcaster. He's a professional broadcaster. It's all he's ever done his entire life is be on the radio. He has the worst broadcasting voice. Yeah, li- listen to this. They're, they'll, they'll be fine whatever school they go to. That's right, but, yeah. That's but my daughter is only five. She's in her third year of school. And she was interviewing at like three. Yeah. That's There's more that's, coming. That's Actually, crazy. I think she was interviewing before. No, she was two. I hate when he does that high register OP thing. Third year of school. Third year of school. He's, it's so obnoxious. This is a prof- this is what counts as a professional broadcaster in today's day and age. How is that possible? He has some things he could talk about, which Does would be he? interesting, such as getting fired from Sirius and, you know, what he's been doing since oh. and the struggling maybe that he's been doing. That's he's- something more real, but he's not talking about any of that stuff that I'd actually want to hear about. He's talking about all this other bullshit that I don't care about. He doesn't talk about anything real at all. Later on in the show, he talks about uh, Sam Kinison came on the show when he was in Rochester. Mm-hmm. And this clip pisses me off so much. Anyone who knows Opie, this is so obnoxious that he says this. 
Kinnison changed my life because I was like uh, in Rochester trying to be a radio guy with the radio voice and just yeah. intro records. And uh, two influences, Brother Weiss. I was lucky to, to work under him and do whatever he needed because I knew he was special. And then he had a friendship with Sam Kinnison. And That's Sam crazy. Kinnison came into Rochester and hung out for the whole week doing radio. Yeah. That day I went. Oh my God! I'm doing all of this wrong. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm not saying that. I, I agree. That's how, no. He made me he go. Had it. What? Throw everything you know away and just try to be yourself and just try to be edgy and you know what I mean? Yep. So this is so frustrating because Opie is nothing but fake, and that was the reason why he's had a falling out with everyone that he was around. Right. Anthony hates him. Jim Norton hates him. All of the people who were part of that show on the the fringes of it have all distanced himself from Opie. Yes. And I also think that he probably didn't treat them very well in addition right. to just treat, you know, I think that he was just kind of an asshole to them. Mm -hmm. They haven't come out and said it as... Well, Anthony has. <laughs> all right. Well, Anthony has. Anthony has come out and said that Opie was an ass asshole. And, and there are people that work 10 hours a day with people they can't stand doing much harder work than radio. So, you know, what am I going to, I can't take the No. You suck it up, you fucking do some jokes. Jimmy was there, so I didn't give a shit. Funny to bounce shit off of Jimmy back and forth. It was great. So, uh, but now it's just, fuck you, fuck you. There's, there's just not enough money in the world for me to sit with that fucking idiot. I smell a reunion. Fuck that. That'll never happen. That guy could go fuck himself. I've just had it with him. Ugh. He's uh. just such a fucking, yuck. <laughs> I can't. I just can't. I tried. I tried, you know, throwing out a fucking olive branch. You know, come on. Come on this show. The guy was out of work for eight fucking months. It's like, come on in. Can, you know, do something. No, he'd rather parade around uh, Manhattan with a with an iPhone and do, do shows from a fire hydrant on 57th. It's the Carl show with Opie kind of there. I don't get it. Well, Opie was always more of a setup guy. When it's your fucking podcast, though, and and now you've alienated everyone who's ever worked with you, it's a little difficult. You know, you can't surround yourself with a group of people when they won't do your show because they think you're an asshole. Be awesome if Artie won a fucking Emmy Award. Uh, so he posted something about uh, he was at rehearsal for crashing, and Opie goes, uh, he goes, hey, Artie, come do my podcast. There it is. Look at him. <laughs> He's like, hey, come do my podcast. So nothing, Artie never even acknowledged it. Uh, like, it, nothing. Didn't say anything, didn't retweet it, didn't do nothing. Probably didn't see it. I don't think he follows Opie or whatever. Didn't see it. So then, uh, like an hour later, Opie tweets, uh, uh, cool, Artie, I'll DM you the location tomorrow. Like, trying to get people to think Artie said yes. It, it's so desperate. Like, what are you doing? Just do your fucking show. He's constantly trying to to get a buzz by by doing shit that like he wouldn't even have done in the nineties. Maybe he's uh he's responding to the Artie in his head. Maybe he uh... Maybe that maybe he's actually hearing, you know, he is a little fucking off. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Hope he's never been the most stable motherfucker on the face of the earth. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, look, that's what he posted. Great, Artie, uh, quitter. I'll DM you the location in the morning. Peace. Artie never got back to him. What kind of fucking mental patient does this? Maybe he doesn't understand how Twitter works, like that we can all see things right, that are right, not Right, that, that he never acknowledged him. We, we could see that. I don't know. I think he's trying to turn a little screw on me, which is fine. You know, whatever. Don't make me fucking hire Carl away from you. That's all you got. <laughs> and believe me, I, I'd pay him. <laughs> I know damn well he's not getting fucking paid by you. And then he had some last night. I fucking, I can't take it. He had like, uh, there's an account, and it's his, called Opie Quotes. <laughs> and he actually quoted a, a line that he, I guess he thought was funny that he said on his show, and then he quoted it on Opie quotes, and then Opie retweeted it. <laughs> like, it's fucking, it's beyond reason. He absolutely runs Opie quotes, put it on there, and then retweeted it with his other account. Who does that? Who would even quote their, like, if you had a funny line on a show, would you ever quote it and then 
put it on some I, I don't I don't know what goes through that that man's <laughs> head. I I don't know, but you know, God bless uh I like your alternate title. Opie quotes. Surprise, good morning, Lamb Chop. Oh my Oh my God. He's talking to himself. That's like when he just talked to fake Artie. He now talks to fake Opie quotes. Now I'm getting worried. He's losing his mind. I know he is. He always has been very unstable, but now I think he's really kind of going over the edge. Opie's name is Greg, and he used to talk about when he was in a mood, he had to step on Greg shells. <laughs> <laughs> it was like walking on Greg shells. Yep. Because he would just snap at people. Jimmy's a little kinder, but he alludes to well, it. Oh, that's oh, nice. nice. Hold on, let me get it back, though, for I got to show it to the camera. Uh, the, God damn it, babe! <laughs> Well, don't get mad at her. Right. Wow. Hold the Roz. <laughs> what are you mad for? <laughs> it's an accident. Okay. You ever hear of an accident, Chip? Yeah, I heard him. I made one in my pants <sighs> one time. I was doing jumping jacks. It's like walking on chip shells. Everything you say. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, I'll make fun of my shirt. <laughs> uh, we well, Jimmy has created an entire character, Chip Chipperson, which I don't think was originally Opie, but he's become Opie. Yeah. And we'll talk more about that. But it's amazing because... He does a weekly podcast now, the Chip Chipperson podcast. Which I love. That is just ripping on Opie. If you if you know what he's talking right. about, all they're doing is goofing on Opie sucking. Well, it's just, it's great if you watch it too, because you can see the delight in Anthony's face. <laughs> <laughs> so well, they, there's 20 years they spent with this asshole. And he has no self-awareness. I, I was nobody. I wasn't doing anything special. I met Sam Kinison, which to me was like, holy crap, throw everything away. Do something different. Start Be yourself. And don't worry about what people are going to say about you. Yep. Don't worry about what people are going to say about you. That's all this guy does. I know. He's on Twitter nonstop. The subreddit for Opie and Anthony has ruined him psychologically because these people just rip on him and he fucking can't stand it. So they just double down and double down and it's now it's just a hate fest. All he does is care about what people say about him. I know. This guy has no self-awareness whatsoever. Here is a clip that sums up the episode we listened to, Guilty by Association. This is like their fourth or fifth podcast. But remember, they've been doing this for years together. Mm -hmm. This cast of characters. They should have a lot of chemistry. They should know what they're doing. You want another news story? No, I'm not done. Oh, okay. Huh? I'll be up there like, damn, this highway has a lot of space. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. one. Uh, I Show we got that chemistry. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear the Mexicans are sending one up so they could steal the hubcaps. <laughs> nah, they wouldn't need to. They'd steal the hubcaps for them a little mug on a rocket ship. All right, makes sense. Um, this might be during that time frame, if you remember, when Eddie Murphy was in the spotlight for picking up a tranny. Well, then David Spade could have really, you know, had a, had right. a good time. Sure. Then he played it yeah. real safe with that. Yeah, things were a little different back then, so uh, he might have been a little extra sensitive, and David Spade was able to just tee him up right there, or the writers, whoever did it. Yeah, I would say if your star is legitimately falling, plus you're in the newspapers for picking up trannies, you might be prone to be more sensitive to jokes. How, sure. How long was the tranny stage? I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I said it to be totally honest with you. She said was, past tense. Oh. <laughs> we got that chemistry, brother. So that's, uh, that's why I said that. This is... Exactly what we and by the way, the show was two hours long. Oh, I know. <laughs> I find I finally got through it this morning. I finally got to the end. My clips are all from the first hour or so because that was that was enough. Yeah, I, I have like over fifty fucking clips. I know. Oh, no. I know. It's just everything that oh I know. I say it all the time, but everything I heard, I'm like, I gotta talk about this. Here's the uh, here's the the clip that sums it up. No, we don't have Iron City. Well, tell me what Peels is because I've never heard Pe of it. Peels. Let me set this up. They're hanging out at a guy's bar, okay? Mm -hmm. They decide that they're going to do a podcast from a bar. Yeah. And Opie brings this equipment, sets it up, and they have on this guy Vic and this guy Sherrod, who are supposedly comedians. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> and then they're talking to the owner of the bar, and... This is how this conversation goes down. No, we don't have Iron City. Well, tell me what Peels is, because I've never heard Pe of it. Peels from? is... I mean, it's... Well, it's, right now it's being brewed at Captain Lawrence. But um, I think it was an upstate New York product. Oh, okay. Way right. back when. But it was, you know, that cheap stuff that you had to buy because it was that price. <laughs> oh, certainly. Hold on. Uh, Sherrod is setting up his own mic. <laughs> 
morning. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Your mic oh, sucks. Is that what? It, wait, wait, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. What? It's a, what? Oh, boy. That is a bad one. What happened between mm. yesterday and today? Does that help? But then that lowers me. No, it lowers everything. Oh, Mars! Check. One, two. Hi, wow. everybody. Isn't it? Um, it's horrible. It sounds it's, a little weird. It's distorted and the, way basic. Listen to that. Hi, how you doing, everybody? I'm in a tin can. There's yeah. no processing on it. Uh, uh, if you need to know. What happened? You have no processing on your microphone. Where's Mars? Is he what? Is he hiding? Is he doing a walkabout? He's doing a walkabout. He's doing a walkabout? Uh-huh. He was just I in see. here. Where is he? He, he reattached the original mic, I think. Well, I don't know why you did that. Just go back to what we had yesterday, please. Everything is going well. We had a, a pretty good show again? yesterday, and now we have to start with this shit. So he put it through my button, so now I can use my button, but now the mic stinks. We're, here comes Mars. You said earlier it's very telling. I, this is what I thought was very telling. I got really crappy equipment, if you haven't figured it out yet. I, I don't I had, know where we are or what's going on. All right, I think I just gave you volume, too. Try that. All right. It's kind of pathetic because uh, you know where we were with our careers. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. Look at, look. I, I had to haul that. I saw the hand truck, and uh, the, I saw the truck. video where the one fell in the puddle. You dropped that yes. in the puddle, right? Just in case you thought that was a bit. No, it wasn't video. a bit. No, it it's not, not a bit. bit. And I then, knew it. And then I had to figure out how to set this whole thing up to to, to continue up my radio career. I recognized your sadness as real. You're not charismatic. <laughs> well, so first of all, after that many years of broadcasting, shouldn't he know how to set that stuff up? Yes. I mean, I know how to set that stuff up. I know. And I've never had a job in like, that. I got to figure out how to set this stuff up. Like, you yeah. plug in a microphone and you get your levels and you. Yeah. That's broadcasting what, equipment. That's what should, you've been should doing. Should be pretty, pretty for decades. Easy. That was the thing that everyone who was a, a OP supporter gave him credit for. Like he was running the show. Like, well, he doesn't have good contributions. He can't talk, but. He's the one who's running the board. And he's he's the one who's running the whole thing. Fuck yeah, yeah. It's I your, steer the ship. It's, right, it's your job. I'm you the st- captain. You yeah. steer the chip. Fuck yeah, right, <laughs> right? do. So what's up, Sam? Welcome. <laughs> oh, thanks, Phone man. call. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, but sorry. We were, yeah. You were oh. in the middle of talking. Oh, sorry. Starting to start why would you do that? You know. God, why you been? I ain't seen you in a while. I was here last week. <laughs> Who are you snapping at? Oh, hey, let me get a piece of Melba toast. Oh, <laughs> Chip, I don't think I don't think people like being called that way. Oh, they don't like being snapped at. It's probably a little insulting oh. and demeaning. Word is bond. <laughs> See, he's not even good at that. No, and I don't understand. Well, I've always hoped there's things I. I mean, I don't. I've never liked Opie. He was no. never. I've never been a fan of his. Even no. when he was on Opie and Anthony, I liked Anthony. Didn't like Opie. He's. I thought he had to have some sort of talent to get him to that point. Right. I just think he's like the luckiest asshole that's ever lived because I don't think he does have any talent. He is so lucky that Anthony Cumia was listening to his show and sent in a parody song that him and his brother Joe did. Yeah. And Opie listened to him and went, oh, these guys are funny. I'll have them on my show. Yeah. That was the best thing that ever happened to Opie. Yep. And now, because he doesn't attract talent. No. He repels talent. He repels talent. He's working on his equipment. It's a two-man job. Yeah, we're a top-notch no, uh, that's organization right now. What is, got it on there. What is Iron City? Pittsburgh. Right neck. Hey, you know what, guys? This right here, this rambling, boring conversation. This is what the show is. Nonsense. Boring, rambling conversations with old men. Yeah. Opie's in his mid to late 50s at this point. I, yeah, at least. And this guy, Vic Henley... I don't know a ton about him. Nobody does, I but thought, he's old. I I didn't realize who he was. I thought he was Larry the Cable Guy. Oh yeah, he time. wishes. He wishes he was Larry <laughs> was the like, Cable Guy. How do you get Larry the Cable Guy in a shitty podcast? Vic Henley. It's interesting. I wanted to do some research on who this guy is, and this is going to sound harsh, but remember that Opie used to do a show with Jim Norton. They used to have these guests on. Amy Schumer and, and David Tao and Colin Quinn, they would constantly have top-notch comedians that you wanted to listen to. And now Opie has fallen so far. He was a multi-millionaire. Well, he still is, but he was making millions of dollars a year working for Sirius. He's now doing a podcast for Westwood One with no business model. I don't know how he makes money on this. There are no advertisements. They don't talk about Patreon. There's no business model here. He's just doing a rambling conversation show. I know. For no reason. It's... And he's got this guy, Vic Henley, on. Vic Henley is so not famous, the only reference to him on Wikipedia 
is his brother's wiki page. And I'm not joking. Huh? If you want to find out who Vic Henley is, you go to Terry Henley's Wikipedia page. He was a college football star in Auburn in the early 70s. Oh. That's about as unfamous as you can be and still have a wiki page. He's so not famous, this Vic Henley guy, that his not famous brother is more famous than him. Oh, Figure I've that ne- out. I have never heard of him in my life. And I I know a lot of comedians. Like, not personally, but I know of a lot of comedians. And that's one I've never heard of. Moving on. What do you got? Uh, Well, okay. So I thought I'd start with the intro. Okay. Uh, it's track one. Oh, yeah. The Opie Radio Podcast. Isn't that the exact same music he used to kind of use? I think it's the sideways Rage Against the Machine song. Because it used to have that Rage Against the Machine music. When he did Opie and Anthony. When it was Opie and Anthony. It was the same thing. I'm like, wait a minute. But it's a little bit sideways. A little bit. I noticed that too. I didn't do a lot of research into that. But it's like to get you excited. Like you used to get excited about like, all right, Jim Norton's going to be here and Anthony. and. Four teens on the show today. You're like, oh, it's gonna be great. And if you're lucky, Opie's not there. He's on vacation. <laughs> right. Those are always the so best ones. Because it so much funnier when it was just Anthony and Jim. Yep. And maybe Jim Florentine. Yep. Oh my god. This is Opie in a nutshell. He's so unaware of what is interesting anymore and what people care about, and he thinks that he's like this frat brother guy still, even though he's in his fifties. Yeah. So at some point, they're just doing the podcast. They're talking in this this bar. And Sherrod Small, mm-hmm. who's one of the guys on the show, shows up. That was one of the beers that inspired the gra- uh, Grandpa's Fridge, which is at my other location. Okay. So. I was... Yeah! 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 What's up, brother? What's up, man? What's hey, Sherrod, can you grab your mic? I got to plug, <laughs> plug another mic in. <laughs> they just all start screaming because oh. this guy who's scheduled to be there shows up. I know. This wasn't a surprise. No. I mean, it's surprising that all the guests weren't there to start the show. I want to point something out, too. This is important to note. So they're in this place called Gephardt's, and I'll get to that. It's uh, a bar in Manhattan. And back in the day, Opie and Anthony would do these remotes where they would go to a venue and do their show. Uh Uh-huh. But the show was actually amplified throughout the venue, and the audience was all there to see it and watch it and participate. Right. And they would be, you'd hear people laughing and yelling stuff out. And it was a show. These guys are just doing a podcast in a bar by themselves. There's like a little rope around them. Oh, I know. And people are just milling about, going about their day. You hear traffic driving by. There's no reason for them to be in public doing this. I know. At one point, they, um, towards the end, I did get almost to the end. I didn't quite finish listening to it. Yeah. There were some uh, tourists visiting New York. Having a conversation you can loudly hear. They right. They're not there from Amsterdam. If you want to play track six. They're just waving yeah, at they're people. They're waving at the like, Their friends are coming in. They didn't even know that this is The Dutch are real white. No, they came they're in. Just babbling. I like that they're so white they make Opie look Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> so he got upset because these tourists didn't realize that yeah. he was doing a podcast. It's roped off. They're just having a conversation. They're just babbling. I'm like... They're at a bar. Yeah. <laughs> You're in a bar in the podcast. afternoon in Manhattan. There's, they're doing all the things you shouldn't do when you're doing a podcast. They're explaining where they are, what's going on around them, looking at people and going, oh, look at that person. They're Which right. Crozier pointed out in the show when we were on Weez's show, he did the exact same thing. We're on the radio and this guy, Brother Weez in Rochester, is looking out the window and going, look at that guy's hat. Right. And it's like, dude, we're broadcasting to people who are listening to this show. And I just want to point out Jim Florentine, who is a friend of the show, friend mm-hmm. of Opie's, mm-hmm. big on Opie and Anthony, big friend of Jim Norton. He does a podcast and he even explains in the intro of his podcast every episode why nobody wants to listen to local radio anymore. A listener's podcast is because you are not listening to regular terrestrial radio anymore because it fucking stinks. Right. It does stink. It stinks because people like Opie and Wheeze still think that they're so interesting that they can talk about something you'd have no idea what they're talking about and you would give a shit. That's what this show is. Right. It's nonstop talking about things no one cares about. 
Like, we'll rate the family. we'll rate the girls as they walk okay, by bet. this place. So far, we've seen two fours and a five and a half. Now, did you see the line for the Hog and Dolls? Yes. What is that about? I don't know. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> All right. So again, these are people who have nothing going on in their lives. They're super fucking boring, and it is the most nonsense conversation. I want to pick up where you left off there. I call this mundane conversation. So far, we've seen two fours and a five and a half. Now, did you see the line for the hog and dogs? Yes. What is that about? I don't know. It's around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because it's the first warm day and everybody wants that's, ice cream. Yeah, I that's guess. what I'm thinking. I don't thinking. have any idea. But every, yeah. School it was unbelievable. Just, school just got out. And it's all a bunch of around. kids. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, we went from winter right into summer. The Once place, again. But that place is so 40 tiny. 40 to 70. 40 to right. 70. Right. My allergies. Uh, ex- do, do you guys get allergies? Yes. Yeah, it's bad. All right, I just want to point out everything that's wrong with that that clip that we just heard. It's so mundane. They talk about rating girls. Oh, that's look at that four and a half. As if as if any of these girls would ever even look at Opie or Vic Henley. Oh my god! Or any of these assholes. Uh, then they talk about the long line at the ice cream place. I know that I couldn't believe. Can you they- believe how long that line is for ice cream? Right. <sighs> Hog dogs. <sighs> yep. And then they talk about what time of year it is, and then they talk about the weather. And then they talk about allergies, which Opie pronounces algies. <laughs> My algies. Am I right, guys? As Crows would say, in what universe does this qualify as entertainment? In what universe does anyone care about this conversation? Well, it's a long line for ice cream. Man, fucking weather, right? Yeah, my allergies. This is the kind of shit that I walk away from in any social setting. Let alone, I'm downloading a podcast and listening to it for entertainment. The fuck is wrong with these people? Oh, I don't know. All right, let's talk about how dumb Opie is, because that's always fun. That could take a while. Opie starts talking about how he doesn't like IPAs, and he explains why IPAs are how they are. How do I, how do I tell Dave that I don't like IPAs? You know, just, me and Carl were just talking about IPAs. You know why uh, they're so bitter? Why? So they could survive the trip to America. Yes. Wow. Do you know what IPA stands for? India Pale Ale. India Pale Ale. It has nothing to do with surviving a trip to fucking America. It's out of the 19th century when India was still owned by the British and they were sending beer to the British who lived in India. They had to put a lot of hops in it so that it wouldn't go bad. That's why it has nothing to do with America. Okay. Everybody knows that. And then this fucking Sherrod character is... Also clueless, he says this. Oh, so they put what extra barley in extra the whatever that f to keep it, uh, you know, fresh. I like it. Everybody knows that IPAs taste the way they do because they're happy. <laughs> he goes, oh, so they put extra barley in there? Yeah, extra barley. That's exactly what they do. You fucking idiot. It's nice and chunky. This is so that guy Ben showed up at one point. Yes. And that His was. Neighbor. Well, their kids play together. Okay. And maybe they're neighbors, but he's like, oh, yeah, my, my son and his daughter are the same age. Okay. okay. Whatever. And he, he tells Ben to join the show. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, that makes sense. So then this is uh, Ben joining the show. Ben, what's going on, bud? How are you? Now, she in elementary hey, come school. On. <laughs> what's up, brother? This is how this is going to go. On. Yes, nice it to is. You. I like it. And I couldn't I'm be okay. happier. Vic, Vic nice you look familiar. Me. I think I might have met you before. Now, what do you see? You see uh, Opie doing some disturbing things in the neighborhood? Uh, not really. Okay, a couple of things going on here. First off, Vix goes, so what? We're just going to invite anyone you know to join the podcast? And Opie's like, yep, that's what we're doing. Vic's like, <laughs> I like that. Uh, that's a good idea. No, that's not a good idea. And then, of course, um, Sherrod tries to make it interesting. He's like, so, yeah, what's fucking Opie up to? The guy's like, nothing. Yeah. Okay, great. That's what happens when you bring boring, mundane fucking people on your boring, mundane show. It just becomes as bland as fucking possible. Why would anybody care about this? Weeze even talks about this in the intro to this show, Uh. which I find ironic. But this is a clip from the beginning of the show where it's... uh, our buddy from Rochester, Brother Weiss. Opie will take regular people off the street. That's the way I love to do it. I get yelled at at my radio station for booking people that aren't famous. I love taking anybody. Whoever you are I'm listening to, come on. Because that's how Opie does and it's funny. Nope. <laughs> that's the selling point? This is what I like to do. I like to talk to fucking anyone off the street, which Weeze does. I was yeah. there when it happened. He just yes. started fucking talking to some homeless guy. But it's not funny or interesting. And he's like, that's what Opie does. It's like, well, first off, 
not to get on this bandwagon, but Howard Stern kind of invented this with the whack pack. Right. Where he would just bring on these crazy people. But Howard was on to something. He's like, oh, this guy's like semi-retarded. We should bring him onto the show. This is funny. Whereas Obi just goes, oh, this is my buddy. His his kid plays with my kid. Let's just have him on the show. And then guess what happens? A boring conversation ensues. No shit. Obi's the kind of person who, when, like, if I bumped into him at a concert or something, I just walk to the other side of the arena. Yeah. He just is someone you want to get away yeah, from. I don't like him. There's things I, I mean, I don't, I've never liked Opie. He was no. never, I've never been a fan of his. Even no. when he was on Opie and Anthony, I liked Anthony, didn't like Opie. He's, I thought he had to have some sort of talent to get him to that point. Right. I just think he's like the luckiest asshole that's ever lived because I don't think he does have any talent. He is so lucky that Anthony Cumia was listening to his show and sent in a parody song that him and his brother Joe did. Yeah. And Opie listened to him and went, oh, these guys are funny. I'll have them on my show. Yeah. That was the best thing that ever happened to Opie. Yep. And now, because he doesn't attract talent. No. <laughs> he repels talent. He repels talent. <laughs> so he doesn't have anyone good. Not the guy anymore. he looks up to is Brother Weeze. I know. Brother Weeze is the worst. Oh, I agree with you. I, too, have been on that show. Yeah. Which doesn't say much for Weeze. Because oh, I'm a nobody. Well, Weeze even says, <laughs> oh, I'm anyone off the street. Even Jen from the Jingles Department, brah. <laughs> and it was just so hacky and terrible. The fact that you look up to Brother Weeze and you learned how to do radio from him tells me all I need to know. Right. You're not going to be good at radio. Brother Weeze is a hack. Yeah. Not interesting, not funny. I don't care for him. <sighs> <laughs> I don't think he's funny. So the guy, Ben, not Ben. Who's the guy? Who, Matt. Owns the bar. Yes. Matt is the bar owner at Gephard's. That's too many people to remember anyway. And they're talking to Matt for a while. Isn't it weird that every week I learn about all these fucking people I don't care about? Yeah. And have to explain this? I don't know how you do this every week. I, it's getting old. I was really irritated this week because of this. This is a tough podcast to listen to. <sighs> this one's a tough one. It's hard because I just I have kept, a lot of hatred for Opie's wasted a lot of my life. I've kept phasing out of it, though. I could bear... I mean, mm -hmm. I physically... Had my ear to yeah. the speaker, and I still couldn't listen to it because I kept spacing out and not listening to it and thinking of something else. So this is the guy, Matt, and they're trying to explain that, dude, it doesn't matter if you're on the show or you just want to come up and grab a mic. Like, everyone can be entertaining. So Matt comes out with a zinger that gets way too much play. We don't know what to do anymore. Put the girls in charge, man. R right. With bring this, back Sadie Hawkins. Bring it back. Permanently. <laughs> yeah, yes. Now, no question. We know. Yeah. She then started know it. Everything's fine. Yes. Like that. Exactly. That, that will help the Me Too Please do uh, the movement. hashtag Ask Me Too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we're going to get along. Regular people are funny. We're going to get along. Regular with that. people can be amazingly From funny. From You own this place? This is why I hate Vic Henley. Regular people are funny. Regular people can be funny, too. Vic, you're a fucking nobody. <laughs> Who are you to call someone a regular person? Fuck you. Ugh. Vic Henley is, as I mentioned, doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. I don't know any comedian that doesn't have a fucking wiki entry. This guy's a nobody, and he's applauding this guy for his hashtag ask me to joke. Ugh. Um, I I'm sorry. I'm going to keep going here. Please do. I have very little to contribute. I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do about it. I didn't that. know what not to do. This is my problem. I listened to this and I hated everything I heard. And it took me hours to clip from this because everything was clippable. I'm like, oh, need, need to talk about this. Need to talk about this. Here is, after that brilliant joke from Matt, they're like, oh, we got to talk to this guy some more. So how, what do you talk about with a, a bar owner in Manhattan? What would be an amazing conversation to have with him? Oh, I know. What did this place used to be? What was it before you had it? It, it was nothing for two years. Before that, it was... It literally uh, sat kosher here for... Steakhouse. Kosher oh, Steakhouse. Right. Yeah. It sat here right. for two How'd years. How'd that not go? Boring. Who could possibly give a fuck? <laughs> We're in a place that I don't care about, and then I'm going to find out what it used to be before it was the place I don't care about? Wow. Why would I possibly give a flying fuck about what this place used to be? Are they trying to fill time? It's a podcast. You don't have to fill time. That's the it thing. It can be 30 minutes. That made me so angry. I said, why is it so long? You should have, well, it should have zero minutes, but it could be 
30 minutes. This is the problem with radio guys. 45 minutes. Opie's going back to hey, time and weather, time and traffic, time, weather. Like he's still fucking hitting those beats that don't need to be hit anymore. Oh yeah, I just want to remind you guys we're at Gephardt on 72nd. Dude, stop it. Stop it. No, you've already said where you are. You shouldn't be there. It's obnoxious. Here's a clip that I call uh, Opie is boring, but he also lacks self-confidence and rightfully so. Listen to him at the end where all of a sudden he just loses all of his self-confidence and has to try to get everyone to support what he's saying. I, I was talking about those old school beers with Carl uh, last week, and it just brings you back to being a kid when you yeah. drink a Schlitz or a PBR, right? Aww. It brings you back to being a kid, you know, and then no one's like nodding their head. He's like, right? <laughs> and I, I love that Opie has surrounded himself with yes men. Uh huh. Opie needs to have this reassurance all the time that he's funny and that he's interesting. He'll tell jokes that are not funny that people laugh at. Here's an example. And what I love about this is that Opie's the one laughing the hardest at it. It's Martin Luther King, okay. Yeah, yeah it's the blackest then, name of a black school. And then there's a guy. there's a McDonald's. When you're uh, when, when it you're, comes out? When you're as white as me, yeah. walking past that McDonald's yeah. is scary. Yeah. 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 Colin <laughs> Quinn used to have a joke about getting on the subway. Uh, everything about that makes me cringe. So here is an example of Opie telling a joke that people don't over the top laugh at, and he gets very uncomfortable about it. He has to address it. Oh, okay. Oh, what's his name who died? Uh, the preacher. Okay. Shit, who flew through the windshield. Guido oh, Sarducci. Okay. <laughs> God damn it, I'm just black. That bombed. Uh, <laughs> Opie's so used to everyone fake laughing all the time that he goes, Guido Sarducci. And then he, I don't know if he was actually trying to make a joke. So um, then he like fake laughed. And then nobody else did. And he goes, that bombed. I think maybe he thought he had the right answer. And then pretended it was a joke and then acknowledged that it bombed. I think you're giving him way too much credit. So they're saying, I'm gonna, I would have been drowning strippers. It's on him. And Opie goes, everything, lap dances. Ugh. It's like, dude, you're so far behind this conversation. And, and even after he said that, Vic Henley has to say, yeah, strangling. Like, like, Opie, come on. We're, we're way past lap dances at this point. We're trying to make this funny. Your fake story. We're trying to make it interesting. But that was what happened when he was on Opie and yes. Anthony, too. He was a joke <laughs> killer. He killed every oh, joke. He is a bit ruiner. A little bit he's everywhere. Got somebody blowing air up his ass. <laughs> and then it comes up. And then he's got to wait until he feels up. <laughs> It's like a big bag. Thanks, pie. Tony. Okay, now I can talk again. <laughs> Anthony, what are those things you use to get the fire going? Uh, yeah, one of those uh, bellows. bellows. There you go. How do you ask? Those... Is Anthony oh, the oldest? Oh, he, knows, he knows every. Oh, okay. He knows a little bit about everything. Yes, I remember using really? the bellows. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll end the steel mill. We could do this all day. Where you, we have at least twenty to thirty more. But uh, the, the girl that uh, sang, I saw the sign. Yeah. She is in studio today to do uh, oh, karaoke for us. Right. Oh, Oh, well, I just want to talk about Opie's insecurity real quick. Uh, did I play this track yet? Well, I was over their house. Yeah, uh, yeah pretty but, much. But, but where you but we lived, lived on the same close? block. We on the same block. Oh, same block. Same but me and Tone and Brian. Brian you're bored? Uh, he had to go nice. Beer. Right, let's get another beer. All right. This is after these guys have been rambling on, name dropping, talking about, oh, he's hanging out with this guy and that guy. They're talking about the 80s. They're talking about comedians who were popular in the 80s. Oh, yeah, me and Dennis Miller, blah, 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 blah. This has been going on for 15, 20 minutes, and then the guy who they brought up, who's like Opie's buddy, takes his headphones off and walks away, and I was like, whoa, what are you, bored? It's like, yes! yes! Everyone is bored! Uh. Every single person involved in this is bored out of their fucking minds, Opie! You're a boring person! So boring. You have nothing to say! Who wanted to be bored? I put together a name drop compilation. Okay. Because do you remember this part of the show where for some reason all they could talk about were all the famous people who have shut them out of their lives? And it's funny because you think about Opie. And again, for people who don't know the backstory on this, Opie at a certain point was on top of his game. He was interviewing the biggest celebrities. Oh, sure. They had huge guests on their show. The fact that he's fallen down and, and it seems like we're being harsh. I might start just doing the Opie radio. This show might turn into just Opie radio all the time. I could rip on Opie for the rest of my life. Yeah. And that would be fun to do because this guy 
thought he was this huge star, like he's always interviewing The Rock, and he's got all these people on the show, and now he's talking to Vic Henley and Sherrod Small in a fucking bar, yeah. and putting on a fucking podcast. The punchline to his story is David Spade's joke, okay? And of course, they all go nuts over it and carry on and on and on. But there's something going on here. I want, I want to hear, see if you hear this. It's a doll, Dan. <laughs> you are by yourself. It's a fucking doll, Dan. <laughs> Did you hear that laughter at the end? <laughs> That's what Chip Chipperson does. Is he? Uh, is that why he does oh that God! laugh? That's why he does like... <sighs> This is, what the, this is the type of laughter that's going on at this show for real. Oh. He does that as a goof. Managed to just sit on the toilet. And it's hard for me to make. A lot no, of times I, I don't it. drink enough fluid. I only eat meat. And they come out and they sound like rocks. What kind of meat? Mm. Tube steak? Ew. Milk steak. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Fuck just, yeah. You know, I'm just kidding. Double guns. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's not a thing now, is it? That's not safe. Good sleuthing. I wouldn't have picked up on that at all, but you're right. And then Vic Henley, and this is the Vic Henley joke, quote unquote. Um, listen to how he tags his joke with the same joke. And I, I bring up, I keep doing the, these air quotes to you about comedians. Mm -hmm. Because this is not how you perform comedy. Boy, did no, anyone in this area know my the, favorite one? It looked like the first season of 106 in Park. <laughs> <laughs> I call it Black Donald's. That's my, my favorite McDonald's in the city. It's Black Donald's. If Ron you want Donald, Donald. Donald. <laughs> Ronnie Don. So that was going back to Opie talking about that McDonald's he's scared of because there's black people there, and Vic says, "I call it Black Donald's." All right. Yeah. It, it it gets a one response, and then he goes, "Yeah, I, I call it Black Donalds." That's not a tag to your joke, asshole. That's the joke you already told that no one cared about. Right. Black Donalds is not a funny joke, and you yeah. suck. Yeah, yeah there'll be like screamo music in the background, and then this guy just puts his dick on like a cutting yeah. board, and it's like, <laughs> it's fucking insane. It used to be something on, online where you would yeah, watch. Yeah, he just chops it right off. Shit. Like Damn, I tried that shit. I broke the saw in half. <laughs> <laughs> wait, yeah, isn't that did. the top of yours? Oh, shit. <laughs> no, nah, wait, you hear what I said? I oh. just, Hold on a sec. Go back. Just be quiet. I tried that shit. Broke the saw in two pieces. <laughs> I like the second take. Yeah, I didn't feel there was better. audio for my joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I stepped on it. That's all right, man. It's your first no, your time. Cock, your cock. What's that? <laughs> stepped on my cock. Yeah, you probably step on your cock. Um. All right. So this is uh, Tim Sabian. He's there hanging out. He's the head of Westwood One who hired Opie. I don't know what they're paying him, but. They see Tim and they're like, hey, there's Tim Sabian. That's uh, Tim Sabian from Westwood One and Robert. They Are they? They haven't laughed once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know why, Opie? There have been no laughs. What do you mean? I'm None. Uh, he's watching these guys who are hanging out next to them. They're probably just straight faced. Like, what is, what did we do? Why did we yeah, hire this guy? Why did we invest in this person there's, again? Yes. There, there's no, no laughter at all. That's Sometimes good. I'll take it out and I'll start waving it. Oh. And I'll be like, babe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's got you laughing today? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Literally anything. Yeah, just keep it. Sometimes. Oh, ship. You got a number one show, man. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So then Tim, remember, Opie, 10 months ago, was being paid millions of dollars. For a while, his channel on Sirius XM was called Opie Radio. Yeah. 30 million subscribers to Sirius. A channel was named after this guy. Yep. They then changed it to Faction. Put him in the afternoons, pushed him off to obscurity, and now here he is on this fucking podcast that only you and I have listened to. Yeah. And a couple of guys at the subreddit who have broken the show down pretty well. Tim Sabian got hired. Tim Sabian used to be our PD uh, in Philly at WISP. And then he uh, worked with us for a very short time at Sirius XM after he got thrown out of the Stern show by Stern's cunt over there. Uh, what's, what's her name? Fuck Robin. It. Uh, Marcy no. Turk. <laughs> Turk, the Turk. Marcy, yeah. Marcy Turk uh, was like, no, Howard, I, I, she hypnotized Howard, and Howard threw fucking Sabian to the wolves. So Sabian was now in charge of the Opie and Anthony show and started trying to make insane changes. I had more arguments in the office, in Tim Sabian's office with Tim Sabian, than I ever had with management. 
because I'm not that guy. I'll just leave. I fucking, I'll just go home and, you know, it'll be gone in the morning kind of a thing with right. management. Or yes him to death or sit in a boring meeting, whatever it took. But Sabian would be like, so you guys, um, you guys want to go to afternoons? And I'm like, no. No, it's a demotion. We, we do mornings here, and I want to continue doing mornings here. And he kept doing it. He actually started getting the ball rolling to put us into afternoons. Mm. So I walked in one day with my contract and said, I'm contracted to do morning radio here at Sirius XM. If this changes, this whole contract is null and void, and it's done. I'm not fucking doing it. Maybe I'm he was like a uh, like a plant from Howard Stern. They faked the whole firing. Maybe like this the FBI like in Trump's yeah, uh, campaign. Right. I was being spied on. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I told him, not, but Tim was like a mental patient. We would go to we would go to restaurants. We went to the restaurant uh, downstairs from uh, Sirius XM once, and they put us in this giant glass room surrounded by uh, the windows. Had you could look into the wine cellar. It was beautiful. So we're eating there, and Tim gets fucking drunk off his ass. And as we're leaving, he's like, he picks up a handful of cake and throws it at one of these windows. It's inside the place. It's fi- <laughs> like some poor fuck now has to squeegee that off because you're too drunk to control yourself. So he, he's now over there, the big digital um, talent uh, guy over as he's his job is to scout and hire talent at Westwood One Digital. So he's like, he got hired in January, and he's like, holy fuck, I got to do something. So he hires this fucking idiot, Opie. But nobody's listening to the show, and Tim Sabian hops up, grabs a mic, and again, it's just selling, 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 selling. Just if, if you're good at what you do, you don't have to sell it. Right. We'll just be attracted to it naturally. <laughs> so how great is this podcasting? The fact is you don't have to sit in a stale old studio every yeah. single day. You get out and about. You look like you're having fun for the first time in a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's. How great is this podcasting? You don't have a studio. You're in some fucking random bar with a mixing board and a computer and microphones that barely work with some random nobodies having a conversation about tasties walking across the street. How great is this? It's terrible, it's Tim. It's fucking garbage. They used to have A or B list celebrities on their show. They used to have hilarious stand up comedians drop in and millions of people listening all contributing to the show. And now it's nothing. Well, Opie has gone from having everything going on. Almost a rival of Howard Stern, who's the biggest of all time shock jock morning jock show nationally. He was close to that point, and now he's doing this garbage podcast with fucking idiots who suck. Mm hmm. Yeah. I guess that sums it up. Yep. You pretty uh, much got, you, you hit the nail on the head. Honestly, I would say The Vanished is a funnier show than OP Radio. The podcast that shall remain nameless. This show is less comfortable than a date with Bill Cosby. Ugh. Also, somehow it's less funny than Bill Cosby, if that's possible. <laughs> all right. What else did I want to talk about? I think I, I think I hit all the things I wanted to hit. I'm still sitting. My name is Brother Wheeze. I've had a show for 35 years in the morning, and you can hear it on iHeartRadio if you want to, but I don't get the guess Opie gets. I didn't play that, but I don't get the, go- the guess Opie gets. Opie is done getting any type of guest. I think we can all agree on that. Nobody wants to be associated with Sherrod Small, Vic Henley, and Carl the Chef. This is, by the way, this is the best show. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, it really is, and it's insane. I'm it enjoying is. doing it. You know, I got to be honest, a lot of interest from networks, <laughs> yeah. things of that nature, yeah. beating my door down. They're like, when do you want to come on to oh. Netflix? I'm like, no, thanks. You know? <laughs> Yeah. One of the things that Chip likes to do is repeat jokes that somebody else tells. Right. That's one of his go-to things. Like someone it tells is. a joke and then Chip will be like, he'll tell the joke. Yeah. Because he got to laugh and he has to have the attention. Here's a perfect example of that. How, How many are, languages Mom, does your daughter speak? She cries and she speaks English. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect that was woman already. That was the wow. perfect how she cries and speaks English. That was, sort of, that was sort of our answer. We're like... All right, so this guy, Ben, who's Opie's buddy, 
How many languages does your daughter speak? She cries and speaks English. And Vic is like, oh, <laughs> she cries and speaks English. Like, well, yeah, we heard, we heard it. He's heard dissecting joke. that joke. D- is he? He's or is he just repeating heart. it? He's trying to just make So sure then we they go on and they talk for a while. And I'm not joking, Jen. This is a minute later. Vic Henley finally figures out what his tag is to this joke. And he just blurts this out out of context. This is amazing to me. What? Let, let the kid be a kid. That kid's going to hate his parents when he gets older. Pig right. Latin and Ebonics. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're teaching. I mean, it's really... It's like Omaha ha, 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 Beach. <laughs> See what he oh, did there? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. We're going down that road. Let the <laughs> oh, professional handle it. Go ahead. Oh, no. Good. Thank, <laughs> thank Chip. It's all, like we were talking about timing before. It's so, yeah, it's good. So important. Uh, 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 wait, I don't want stuff. <laughs> What's some more <war> stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Might do it. He does the chip laugh again. <sighs> but did you hear that part? Yeah. Where the guy, the guy says, oh, she knows English and crying. Okay, those are the two languages she knows. And then they go on and they're like, yeah, what about these parents who teach their kids Chinese and blah, 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 blah. And then the guy goes, pig Latin antibiotics. Like he was trying to formulate what's my joke going to be for so fucking long. It's like, dude, you're so late to the party on this. So he's over there at Westwood One with Tim Sabian and uh, Carl uh, until he pisses the, him off. Like who? <laughs> Rick Delgado? Can't stand him. Fucking E-Rock, not a fan. Everyone that's working there still, there's nobody. Sam, or Steve C. He wound up fucking killing Steve C. <laughs> Sam used to be his friend. They used to hang out, right? I'm, I'm kidding about the killing <laughs> Steve C. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sam, he used to hang out with Sam. But Sam never liked him either. Sam was like me. Sam smiled and, and yeah. nodded and knew that he had a career to get to. So it wasn't like, you know, Sam Roberts is a, he's a talented motherfucker, but he's also a sneaky little shit. I, I love him. Believe me, I love him. But he will do what he's got to do for Sam Roberts. Brilliant. Good. And he smiled at that fucking idiot for years also, like I did. And it wound up working out for him. Other people, not so much.